Welcome to worship today at St. Paul Lutheran Church. We're honored to gather with you in worship, even though we, we can't do this personally in the, in the same building. We're here to bring you God's Word in this Lenten season. And the Lenten season is designed to be 40 days, taking us from Ash Wednesday uh, all the way to Easter. And actually, the Sundays of Lent are to be many Easter's, and I, and I can't think of a better way to describe the message from God's Word today. It's a mini Easter where we get real answers to death. We get real answers why we can have the hope we have in Christ, who is life. May that be what you walk away with today, a guarantee that in Christ you live. Our worship service will begin with the opening hymn, hymn 588, Abide With Me. We'll sing verse 1, 5, and 6. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Dear people of God, we are unworthy of God's goodness. Let us turn to him in repentance, confessing our sins and pleading for his forgiveness. And this week we examine ourselves through the lens of the seventh and eighth commandment. Lord God Almighty, what you say in the seventh commandment is plain. You shall not steal. You urge us to freely give you the first fruits of our blessings and not to withhold from you our best. Will a man rob God? Yet, Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. You require that, rather than taking what is not ours, we must be faithful with the resources and abilities you have entrusted to us. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Lord God Almighty, what you say in the Eighth Commandment is plain. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You warn us that though it is small, our tongue can cause immense damage. With his mouth, the godless destroys his neighbor. A perverse man stirs up dissension, and a gossip separates close friends. So today, Lord, we confess our misuse of your gifts of possessions and reputation. Sins of taking advantage of others in order to get ourselves ahead. Sins of squandering the time, talents, and treasures you have given us. 
sins of ripping others down with our words rather than building them up, sins of remaining silent while another's reputation is dragged through the mud. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Faith clings to God and His promises. Faith sees the unseen. As we look to Job 19, he was a man that knew suffering, suffering that maybe we will never face in our worst day in life. Yet look at what his faith clings to. Look at what his faith sees. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another how my heart yearns within me. This is the word of God. We continue with the singing of In Christ Alone Hymn 752, verse 1 and 2. Oh, 
appropriate at a time like this to have this portion of Scripture where Jesus, before he walks to his cross and enters the tomb, shows the kind of power that he has and the reason he came to be Savior. In John's account, chapter 11, you'll see Jesus offers comfort and Jesus offers the solution to death. John chapter 11, selected verses. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. He, it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Do, I, do as I tell you and, and believe, and then you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. This is the word concerning Jesus. If you've gone to a grocery store lately, you may have noticed that uh, the aisle containing all paper products is usually cleared out. There is no sign of toilet paper. You'll maybe notice, too, that now there are signs saying that you can't take more than two per family for chicken or other things that seem to be the hot items that people are hoarding. I don't know why, because tap water is fine, but there are pallets of bottled water and people are buying them up to bring them home. Why, why is this happening? Well, people are saying that it's because of fear, right? At a time like this, when there are unknowns, they, they want to have something that they can count on. At least I'll have enough food. At least I won't run out of this crucial item. At least I'll have this. So in your own mind, it gives us comfort when we don't really know how it's going to turn out. But there's a far bigger thing going on here. This is just a symptom. When a virus comes and, and it attacks and it doesn't care the gender, it doesn't care the age, it doesn't care the race, when it comes and, and when we see the, the number of infections and the death toll rising, I'm sorry, it brings fear. Why does it bring such fear? Well, because death is something we can't control. Death is something that in the deepest part of us we realize because of the way God created us that we weren't supposed to die. Death is because of, of sin, and so when we realize that, that we as sinners and sin every day deserve this death, it's a, it's a scary thing. But in our mind, we reason that, you know, you just grow up, you get older, and it's something you face. You, you just die when you get old, and in our mind, we think that's the progression of life, and, and we push it aside and push it away, we can still function in life, but it's always there poking. And now it's right in front of us. What, what do we do with this thing called death? What do we do when unknowns scare us to death? Jesus gives words right here that bring us the solution, that, that bring us the answer that we seek. There was, there was a man who was loved by two sisters 
that ended up getting some kind of virus or sickness. He was not doing well, and, and the sisters, knowing what Jesus could do and being friends with Jesus, sent for him. And it's interesting what Jesus did at this point. He didn't come immediately. He allowed days to pass, and the sisters sat at their bedside and, and watched their brother go from, from being vibrant to eventually being very sick and not knowing what's going to happen or what else to do. They saw him die, and there was no Jesus. In fact, Jesus, as he's talking to his disciples in the dialogue before this, talks about it to them, saying that he has gone to sleep, and the disciples thought, that's good, that's what you need when you're sick, you need sleep. They thought nothing of it, but Jesus had a reason why he stayed away. And we see it in the dialogue he has with Martha, who comes and meets him on the road. And of course, you always think when something could be prevented, if we would have just done this, if we would have just isolated him, if he had just had this, we could have uh, solved that so he wouldn't have died. If Jesus, you would have been here a few days early, he wouldn't have faced this death, and maybe so Jesus had that kind of power. But Lazarus had died. And so Jesus says, your brother will rise again. And and Martha says, I know he'll rise again. It's going to happen at the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus says to her the very thing he came to do. The reason why he allowed Lazarus to remain in the tomb, good and dead, to have eyewitnesses gathered there to see at that tomb now sealed because four days dead in that climate, you need it sealed. And Jesus comes and offers this truth to Martha and and to you and to me. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus is not saying, I can do resurrection things. I can bring you back to life for a time. He is saying, I am the resurrection. Anyone who believes in me, any child of mine, anyone that that has faith in me, baptized into my name, they will live. I will give them resurrection. They do not need to fear death anymore. I am death's undoing. That's what I came to do. And I'm going to put it on display. And then he asked the crucial question, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Martha gives this amazing testimony what faith does. It takes what Jesus says, that truth, and says, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Yes, Lord, I do believe that you are the resurrection and you are life. Jesus hadn't even gone to the cross. The tomb had not been vacated, yet faith believes what Jesus says, and now our faith can believe in what Jesus does. He approaches his father and says, thank you, Father, for listening to me and for listening to what I'm about to do because now Jesus will show us death's undoing. And there were people there, including Martha, saying, don't roll the stone away. It's not going to be good. In our mind, we think of oh, the, the mass graves in China. In our mind, we think of the line of caskets waiting to be incinerated in Italy. We think of what may happen in our country, all the death, all the dying. And what we're given, the comfort we're given, we maybe can come up with some kind of vaccine that as long as we isolate from one another, it'll be okay. But this is not a solution This is only temporary. And even if you do survive and move on through this and live, we still all face death until now. We know now what death has to face, and it's Jesus. Jesus walks up to that tomb, and he says these simple words, Lazarus, come out. And a man who is four days dead that could not move or do anything on his own, gets up and walks out with the burial cloth still on. And when they're removed, you can see and imagine what is happening there. Every jaw is down. Every jaw drops. Mary and Martha would run to him and cling to him. The one they loved that was gone is now alive. It kind of gives you what heaven's going to be like right there, right? Being reunited with those you love in life, and there Jesus with the power waking even the dead. Can you see this in the resurrection? That's what Jesus is. Resurrection and life. Death is done. 
The tomb is empty. The victory is ours. Jesus proclaims it, and then Jesus does it. Days later, he is walking to a cross, and there he allows himself to experience our punishment. But the tomb can't hold him because he has power over death. And the resurrection life he comes back to share, the resurrection life he guarantees to us is the resurrection life he gives right here and now. Believe it. Believe it. He is not going to give you a photo album or, or give you an obituary so that you can have these memories of your family members. No, he is going to give you reunion and life in heaven. That's what Jesus comes to give. So in time when, when fear comes, and it does because of unknowns, when there's going to be a lot of dying around us, and it may be in reverse order, where it's not just the old that are dying, but sometimes the young, fear will come. But now you have Jesus' answer, and it's him. He is the resurrection and the life. He is your resurrection and life. Amen. Let us confess our faith together, the faith that unites us as one in the body of believers, the faith that puts to words all that our God has done, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During this portion of the service, if we were gathered here normally, we would be gathering the offerings but you still have opportunity to give. There are ways you can give online. We have push pay through our app. You can go to our website. You can sign up on your bank to do auto pay. You can go and put it in the mail and mail it to the office. What's the goal in our giving? It's because Jesus has given us more than we need so we can be generous. Let's make sure that Christ Church stays strong and we can do that by participating in this ministry. We continue with prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Eternal God and Father, even when the clouds of affliction and darkness of fear seem to hide your face from us, we know that your love remains constant and unchanging along with all your promises to us. Our hearts are heavy with the reality of a deadly virus that is spreading over our nation and the globe. Help us to remember that sin causes the dark difficulties of life in this world. It also help us to be our comfort as, as our faith clings to the truth that you have conquered sin and its consequences on the cross and given us the hope of heaven by your empty tomb. Allow us to live each day with this hope, hope that gives us a clear vision of our resurrection in you, hope that diminishes fears and leads us to walk confidently so that we may serve others. Hope that makes our words, actions, and attitudes a light of solace and comfort for all that we meet and know. We pray with this confidence that you have heard and that you will bless us through Jesus our Savior, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Our service concludes with the singing of In Christ Alone, the final two verses, verse 3 and 4.
What a privilege to worship with you, you. and I, I think, pastors, as we've been putting these services together, it's the reality when we are coming to an empty church, we, we miss you, and I pray you miss us too, to be the gathering of believers here, but we don't need to be in a location, it's the Holy Spirit that unites us, we're a body of believers gathered together with Christ at the head, and he's still in the lead, still in charge, knowing exactly what he's going to have happen until he brings it all together in that blessed reunion. So in the days ahead, no matter what's happening now and unpredicted forward, Christ is in heaven and he's preparing a place for us, but he's left us here with work to do. And so may you in your life be Christ's heart in your attitude. May you be Christ's hands in your service to others. And may you be Christ's voice in your witness to the world and those around you. God bless you.